Dynamic probability is my made up heading. There's, there's no way that causes dynamic probability, but this is what it is. Um, the boring heading of this would be probability trees. But the time when it's actually useful and valuable to use probability trees is where as you progress through a scenario, a multi-stage complicated event, the probability it changes, it's dynamic, right? It doesn't just stay the same. You roll the dice, it's always a six. It's always a six. Always, it's, it's static, okay? The opposite is a dynamic situation where as you do one thing, it affects what happens next in the next stage. Okay, this happens all the time. Question 11, it gives us a kind of contrived example, but it's, um, it's easy enough to understand and that's why it's a useful place to start. Let's look at it. Alex and Julia are playing in a tennis tournament. They'll play each other twice and each has an equal chance of winning the first game. All right, let's stop there. We can put this down in a diagram right away. The whole point is that when you have these dynamic probabilities, that's where probability trees really get a chance to shine. Where even though they take some time to draw, right, you get repaid richly in that time because it makes it so much easier to understand what's going on. So we've got two alternatives. Alex wins or Julia wins, okay? This is the first game. Maybe you want to label this as such. First game. Okay. I always put my headings up the top because in a probability tree, a column of events represents one single thing happening, but there are different alternatives within that thing. Okay. So they already tell us there's an even chance, first game. So I've got a half, well I'll do 0 0.5 here. 0 0.5 there, no problems. Okay. If Alex wins the first game, so now I'm on one branch, right, and not the other. If Alex wins the first game, his confidence increases. And his probability of winning the second game is increased to 0.55. So here we are, up the top. Okay, we're considering if Alex is one. Still there are two alternatives, Alex or Julia. But now the odds are in his favor, right? So we've got 0.55 up here, which means that it's complement. Julia winning the second game, of course, is 0.45. Excellent, okay. However, if he doesn't win the first game, he loses heart, oh how emotive. So that his probability of winning the second game is reduced to a quarter, okay, 0 0.25. So I've got my same alternatives again, okay. So we're thinking about the likelihood of him winning the second game after losing the first game. I should have um, made that heading. This is the second game now. All of these events down here are the second game. And it's dropped down to 0 0.25. So disappointed. As if I'm going to win, Julia's clearly stronger. Okay? Which means that the compliment, Julia winning twice, now becomes 0 0.75. Cool. So now from here, even though you don't, they don't ask you to do this, but it's going to be useful to us in a second anyway, there are only four alternatives, right? I could say the probability of Alex winning both games, right? That's going to be 0 0.5 times 0 0.25. Five, five, which I do not know over the top of my head. I'm guessing it's 0 0.275, 75. There we go, which we get by the product rule, right? We're just multiplying that across. The probability of Alex winning the first game, but then losing will be, that looks like 0 0.225. Yeah. The probability of uh, Alex coming from behind and winning is going to be 0 0.5 times 0.25. J, A, by the way, order matters here, clearly, right? That's 0 0.125, yes. And then the probability of Julia getting a clean sweep, that'll be 0 0.375. Okay. Hmm. So, no problems. There we go. I've got all my options lined up, and you can see, you can verify if you like, that when you add up all of these, you're going to get your 1, just like you'd expect. Okay, all right, excellent. Now they ask us some questions. Find the probability, well actually just one question, that Alex wins exactly one game. Now the benefit of course of actually writing this out is because you can see it's standing there out in bright shining lights, which are the alternatives that are gonna be part of the, um, the favorable outcomes, right? Here you go, Alex wins one game here, and he wins one game here. Simple, okay? So you could write it over here or down below if you like. The probability of Alex 
winning one game wins once. Uh, once exactly, looks to me like it's 0.35, 35%. Okay, not too bad. Simple stuff, right? Like I said, very contrived. They've given you all these options here, but you can see the whole point of it is that now that you have a probability tree and everything is labeled, it's so structured. There's no opportunity for you to miss something, to miscount, it's all laid out for you, okay? Uh, I think the big challenge in probability questions is, is miscounting things, that's all.